My Stirling Single, part 42, fitting a pair of live steam injector water valves underneath the tender and piping them into the main water outlet. But first I thought I would show you what the cellulose thinners did to the paint. 24 hours later and the solvent has evaporated and most of the paint has just fallen off. The vacuum cleaner gets rid of a lot of it, but there's still some more paint to remove. I'll give it another application of cellulose thinners, but not today. This episode is about something entirely different. With the tender body on its side on the bench, I'm holding the tender frames in the correct position so I can make a felt tip pen mark showing whereabouts on the tender I can fit the two injector water valves. Both of these water valves need to fit in the tender on the opposite side to where the brake shaft is fitted. This job is not as simple as it looks. The drag beam on the tender frames is a substantial casting. And of course it needs to be, because it's a highly stressed component when you've got passengers behind you on the train, you're pulling a lot of weight. With the tender frames in position, I'm marking where the drag beam ends. And as you can see, there are now two felt tip pen marks, which marks the part of the tender floor that's covered by the drag beam. I'm having a bit of an experimental marking out session. At first I thought it might be a good idea to line up the two water valves with the two bolts that hold the bracket underneath in place. But that would not be too smart. Don't forget this is a tender, it will be full of coal, the coal will be being shoveled into the firebox. And as the shovel full of coal goes past the handles of the injector water valves, they're going to be in the way. So I had a second thought and made another mark, to move both of the valves over to the right hand side a little bit. Oddly enough, I did this job during the Easter holiday 2022. And it was only when I looked at the video, as I'm editing it, I realised that I'd drawn three crosses. And in this clip, I'm drilling holes on the marks on two of them. And if I have my calculations correct, once these pilot holes are drilled, with a bit of luck, they should be in the correct position. Originally, to drill the pilot holes, I used a 1 8 of an inch diamond to drill bit, and it didn't cut very well. So I sharpened it on my drill doctor, and it still didn't cut very well. I ended up drilling the holes one size less than one eighth. I enlarged the holes using my Bosch electric drill and here I'm drilling the final size which is 5 sixteenths of an inch in diameter. Often when I do jobs like this I drill the holes in the wrong place then I have to put a patch panel in but I'm not doing that in this case. The hole nearest to the camera needs to be in such a position that when I fit the valve, as I'm showing here, it does not foul the frames. As I was fitting the first valve, I realised I was fitting it so that the pipe would collide with the first wheel. That's why I positioned the valves as shown in the video. This is a very temporary fitting, just to make sure that everything's OK. And to make sure of that, I put the frames in position, and as you can see, there isn't much space between the drag beams casting and the side of the frames. It's amazing what a bit of felt tip pen bashing does. I did put them in exactly the place I wanted them to be. Had one of the water valves have been in the wrong position, then I wouldn't be able to refit the frames. But thankfully everything's okay. Here I'm test fitting the hand pump feed. This pipe fixes to the engine with a pressure union and allows the hand pump to be able to pump water from the tender straight into the boiler. And the pipe needs to be able to move up and down and from side to side. That's why there's a coil built into the pipe. If you saw the video from yesterday, you will realize that I put the piping into the acid bath to get rid of the oxidization caused by the silver soldering process. And in this clip, I'm finishing off the cleaning up process with a rotary wire brush. When I put the handles into the water valves, you can see what the plan is now. These two water valve handles are at the opposite side to where the brake shaft is, and there's plenty of room between the handles and the brake shaft to shovel the coal from the tender into the fire hole of the boiler, without catching the shovel on any water valves. In this clip, I'm fitting a couple of double union adapters to this special fitting from PM Research by using copper washers plus some Loctite 542. I don't think this junction's going to leak. 
I've also temporarily fitted a couple of union nuts so I don't damage the threads. These union nuts are 5 16 by 32 threads per inch and these are designed for 3 16 of an inch diameter pipe. Initially I've decided to fit the water valves that use 5 30 seconds of an inch pipe which in turn is the correct size for the quarter by 40 unions because the threads on the water valves are quarter by 40 with union nuts and cones for 5 30 seconds pipe. I'm using this very small microcosm pipe bender to get some very tight bends because the 532 pipe which is actually 4mm pipe is fairly close to the wheels. Here's a clip from the water feed end and this is a clip where the pipe fastens onto the valve body. In this episode I didn't show the silver soldering process. If you want to know how to silver solder you could watch the silver soldering that I did in the previous episode. In this clip I'm fitting the other pipe from the water outlet to the inlet of the valve. Silver soldering and getting the pipe runs neat is just a matter of practice. The more you do it, the better you get at it. Or so I was told once upon a time by a past girlfriend. Here's the finished water network. I know it looks a bit bizarre, but there are quite a few connections to make to the engine. And in case you missed the last episode, the two elevated pipes are for water to and from the axle pump. In this clip I've repositioned the tender frames just to see where the axle's going to be and by using my scriber to simulate an axle I can see that there's plenty of up and down travel where the axle would not collide with any of the piping. Don't forget the axle box holes are right at the bottom of the axle boxes not in the middle as is normal practice. I'm sure this will be okay but I'll find out soon when I reassemble the wheels onto the tender frames. And that is it for this episode. There are still one or two things left to do, mainly putting fittings on the outlet from the valves and from the inlet to the pump and the water return back to the tank. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.